Welcome back, agents. It's that time of year again, so it's time to brief you on SCP-4666, the Yule Man. Special Containment Procedures Web traffic and law enforcement channels worldwide are to be monitored for evidence of SCP-46666 activity, particularly for cases of stalking or reports of anomalous phenomena involving families with young children. Should a V-Snacht event be suspected to be in progress, the nearest containment task force is to be dispatched to attempt containment of SCP-46666. Media coverage of family deaths attributed to SCP-4666 is to be suppressed or falsified to make said deaths appear as non-anomalous home invasion murders. Forensic evidence and instances collected by non-foundation agencies are to be confiscated and witnesses amnesticized. Description SCP-46666 is currently believed to be a single, exceptionally long-lived humanoid entity of unknown origin. Survivors of Weissnacht events typically describe SCP-4666 as a very tall elderly male of European descent with an extremely emaciated appearance. The entity always appears completely naked, even when observed outdoors in freezing weather. Though the nature and extent of its anomalous properties remain uncertain, SCP-46666 appears capable of instantaneous or near-instantaneous travel to any location north of 40 degree in latitude, and possibly to any location on Earth. SCP-46666 activity occurs exclusively within a period of 12 consecutive nights every year, from the night of December 21st, 22, to the night of January 1st, 2. This period is known as SCP-4666's active phase. During this phase, in what are termed Weissnacht events, SCP-4666 will appear at dwellings in one or multiple locations north of 40 de Granand latitude. In all known Weissnacht events, these dwellings have shared the following characteristics. Isolated rural location, home to a family with at least one child under the age of eight, and situated in an area with snow cover lasting throughout the event. Weissnacht events consist of the following general progression. Nights 1 through 7. Children will report seeing SCP-46666 in the vicinity of their family's dwelling. The entity will typically be observed watching the dwelling from a distance, such as from across a nearby field or from the edge of a neighboring forest. In some cases, Children will report waking up at night to find SCP-46666 watching them sleep through a window. Nights 8 through 11. Family members, including the parents, will report sounds of footsteps coming from the roof or the attic. An extremely unpleasant odor will also frequently be noticed inside the dwelling. No cause for these phenomena will be found. As a result, Parents will often begin to suspect that their family is being stalked, or even that their dwelling might be haunted. Night 12 Throughout the night, one of two scenarios will occur. The first, and most common, is that SCP-46666 will kill all members of the family save for one child under the age of eight, whom it will abduct. SCP-4666 will inflict incapacitating injuries to family members while they are sleeping. Then herd them into a single room of the dwelling where it will proceed to kill them, given each other. The method of killing varies with the event, and will typically be preceded by some form of torture, which appears to serve a ritualistic purpose. In the second scenario, which has occurred in roughly 15% of known Weissnacht events, SCP-4666 will not harm the family. Family members will report hearing footsteps inside their dwelling during the night though no signs of forced entry will be found. In the morning, children will discover presents at the foot of their beds. These will consist of toys crudely crafted from the remains of human children. Discovery. SCP-4666's existence and ongoing activity were first detected in 1974 through the Foundation's newly implemented Anomalous Signature Recognition Program, when several highly similar home invasion incidents resulting in family deaths were found to have occurred throughout the Northern Hemisphere during the night of January 1st and 2nd. Extensive research into civilian and law enforcement archives worldwide 
eventually uncovered evidence of probable Weisnacht events for nearly every preceding year, going back to the late 18th century, average of 3.1 known events per year. Numerous historical documents were also found that appear to describe SCP-4666 activity occurring before this period, in some cases as early as the 2nd century AD in Europe and Russia, and as early as the 1st century BC in Scandinavia. Fingerprints belonging to the same humanoid entity have been discovered at the locations of all Foundation-investigated Weisnacht events. These have been matched to a partial fingerprint found preserved in dried blood on a recovered SCP-4666-A instance dating from 1873. The fingerprints present characteristics not known to occur in human beings. Human-like white hairs were also recovered from the locations of several Weisnacht events, though no DNA, human or otherwise, could be extracted from them. On 02 2018, Several SCP-4666-A instances were discovered at a family's residence in Huna, Alaska, following the conclusion of a Weisnacht event. Among these instances was a crude, life-sized doll made from the emaciated body of a female child, to which the following modifications had been made. A dress made from various pieces of dirty, discolored clothing had been sewn around the body and, in several places, into the body's skin. The mouth had been sewn shut with thread made from human tendons, and the lips painted red with a solution consisting primarily of human blood. The fingernails of another child had been glued over the body's fingernails with pine resin. These had been painted red with the same human blood-based solution. Three of the body's fingers were missing. The entire scalp had been removed from the head and the scalp of another child with long blonde hair sewn onto the head in its place. The hair had been tied into two braids. Both eyes had been removed, and two large round pebbles on which eyes had been crudely painted placed into the empty orbits. Upon examination by the family, the child from whom the doll had been made was found to be still alive, albeit unconscious. Authorities were notified and the child was airlifted to Bartlett Regional Hospital in Junio, Alaska, where she survived for 18 hours. Two Foundation agents were dispatched and were able to interview the subject. Following the subject's death, her body was confiscated by the agents, and all witnesses amnesticized as per standard procedure. DNA testing revealed the subject had been Ekaterina Morozova, age 7, a known abduction victim of SCP-46666, taken from her family's residence in Dubovka, Russia, in 2016. Autopsy of the subject's body showed she had been severely malnourished during the two years following her abduction, which had resulted in considerable stunting. Several scars and burns were present on her skin and she had suffered two bone fractures, left tibia and left ulna, that had not been reset and had healed improperly. Hands were heavily calloused. The cause of death was attributed to multiple organ failure resulting from severe sustained malnourishment. Audio log, location, Bartlett Regional Hospital, Juneau, Alaska. Interviewers, Agent Antoni Kowalczyk. Subject, Ekaterina Morozova, female, age seven. Notes, the subject regained consciousness for roughly 30 minutes before expiring, during which she was interviewed. Hospital staff had previously removed the thread that had been sewn into her lips, allowing her to speak. Despite having been administered a morphine drip, the subject was largely coherent throughout the interview. The subject did not understand English, and initially spoke only a language that was unfamiliar to agents Kowalczyk. However, after several minutes the subject began addressing the agents in Russian, which she spoke poorly. Agent Kowalczyk, who spoke rudimentary Russian, was able to interview without the need for an interpreter. Hello, I'm Antoni. What's your name? Or... are you going to take me back to him? No, I promise. I'm just here to talk to you. I don't want to go back. You don't have to. You're safe now, Mishka. 
Can you tell me what happened to you? Do you remember the night he came to your house? I remember. He hurt Mama and Papa and Katya and Juliana for a long time, and they were bleeding. After they stopped screaming, he put me in his bag. His bag? He had a big bag. Other children were in the bag too. I think we go to other houses. I hear people screaming outside the bag all during the night. Each house he put another child in the bag. Then after the night he'd take us away. Where did he take you? Underground. <laughs> Deep. Underground? You mean in a basement? Deep. Everything earth and mud and ice. Bones everywhere. Everything cold. I can't sleep because it's too cold. Were there lots of other children there with you? Lots of children. Lots of tunnels. Lots of holes. But I can't see all. I can't see the other. <laughs> Too dark. My hole is with Renee and Heckler and Sasha and Paul. We make the toys together. The toys? If you don't make the toys, you don't eat. Don't stop making the toys. Don't fall asleep. Or he hurt you. Does he hurt you? How? He hit you. Or he burns you. Or he bites off your fingers. Or he cooks you on the fire in his room and eats you. He ate Philippe and Sally. What about you? How did this happen to you? Did he do this? Rene and Hecla and Sasha and Paul do this. They have to. Why? I get sick. When you can't make the toys, you become the toys. And with that, this will conclude our briefing on SCP-4666. Be sure to report any signs of a Weissnacht event to a senior staff member, and be sure to like and share this video with your fellow researchers to spread the word about this anomaly. Don't forget to subscribe and turn notifications on so that you don't miss our future briefings.